Hello, everyone. My final presentation for organizational behavior is about the current shortage of accountants and certified public accountants, also known as CPAs, in the accounting industry. I have chosen this topic since I currently work for a CPA firm and have become aware of the steady decline in the accounting workforce. When I was hired at my job, upper management informed me that the goal of my onboarding was to train me to eventually become a CPA at the firm. The company I work for primarily focuses on the continuing education process with employees since they are facing short shortages in their certified workforce. Without putting an emphasis on continuing education, many employees may not incorporate the drive to pursue higher education into their lives since a CPA license requires the completion of four separate exams within an 18-month window. I have not sat the CPA exam personally, but what I have come to understand from listening to my coworkers is that it is a very difficult test and a lot of time outside of the office is needed to study. Once the 18-month window passes, tests that have already been completed and passed 18 months prior will need to be redone. Much of my research is gathered through several educational articles that I encountered online. The basis of my research is derived from my own experiences working in an accounting firm, too. Throughout the speech, I will regularly cite the websites that I've gathered relevant information from. Towards the end, I will list the articles and sources and how they are relevant to the information presented. According to definitions found on Indeed.com, an accountant is an individual who records and reports financial transactions for individuals and entities for taxation and payroll purposes. A certified public accountant, or CPA, is an accountant that has passed the state license test and is qualified to complete more complex financial operations within a firm. The main difference in job responsibilities between a CPA and an accountant is that a CPA can manage teams and hold senior positions in a company. Because accountants need to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree in finance, accounting, or a related field, and a CPA has to have a CPA license along with the minimum requirements, this has led to accounting firms struggling to find qualified candidates. The decline of accountants within the United States is overwhelming. According to an article written by Wall Street Journal, more than 300,000 accountants and auditors in the United States have left their jobs in the last two years. This equates to a 17% decline in the overall workforce. The article also states that not enough students are pursuing accounting degrees to make up the difference. Also, students who are pursuing those degrees often begin careers in other industries that pay more upfront. Controllers Council states that fewer students are, are pursuing accounting as their desired degree. Many current CPAs and accountants are reaching retirement age, and technology cannot replace the need for human professionals in the accounting world. In an article written by the CPA Journal, Enrollment was down for accounting degrees of all levels from 2016 to 2018, including bachelor's, master's, and Ph.D. For a bachelor's degree, enrollment was down 4%. For a master's degree, enrollment dropped 6%. For a Ph.D., enrollment declined the most at 23%. CPA exam candidates decreased by 17% between 2019 and 2020. 2020 to 2021 did not offset this as there was only a 6% increase during this period. Along with this, those who passed the four components of the CPA exam dropped 11% between 2019 and 2020. Illinois has recognized the problem and asked accounting professionals under age 35 why they were not pursuing the CPA credential. 32% did not see the value of accounting careers. 28% did not see a return on investment, 28% explained that their employers did not require it, and 28% valued other credentials above CPA. For those that were pursuing it, the time commitment, fear of failure, and difficulty of the exam made this an uncertain part of their future. For those that have already acquired the licensure, the days are numbered for many of these professionals in relation to when they plan on retiring. According to GoingConcern.com, the AICPA estimates that about 75% of CPAs will be eligible to retire by 2020, and 75% of current CPAs will retire within the next 15 years. This is because many of the current CPAs that have risen to higher levels of management are baby boomers approaching or at retirement age. This mass exodus of CPAs will leave a gaping hole in the supply of experienced workers. 
In an article written by Accounting Today, many top 100 firms and partners of the company have a mandatory retirement age between 60 and 66. These partners need to pass along responsibility to rising professionals, but are sometimes apprehensive to do so. From my experience, a common goal within accounting and CPA firms is to become a partner of the company. If current partners are not willing to pass this along to rising professionals, it could further lower the rate of entry into the field and careers. The last large point is that technology can only accompany an accountant, but can never replace one. Entrepreneur.com explains that technology does not have feelings and, in turn, cannot learn common sense or how to plan creatively around new problems. The field requires a certain level of professional skepticism to interpret data accurately, and strategic recommendations can be made. Machines may not be able to adhere to global codes of ethics and standards. Although technology is relevant to an accountant's everyday life as far as bookkeeping and completing accounting tasks quicker without the need for manual entry, AI and software will never fully replace the unique judgment that is required by the accountant. Accountants act as advisors since they are trained to analyze risks, spot outliers, and find exceptions and trends within rules. Accountants also avoid cyber fraud and navigate the digital world, which cannot fully be replaced by computers. For this reason, the accounting field can only function properly by finding eligible clientele. My research on this topic matters as most small and large businesses utilize accounting methods in one way or another. From my personal experience, without accountants readily available, many businesses would inaccurately represent financial records and record data in a non-functional way for the public. This can cause legal issues when filing taxes and reporting records to the public and shareholders. The knowledge I add can help the situation since many people do not think about the need for and importance of accounting in everyday life. With this information, people can understand just how much an accountant truly does to help businesses and the public. This is a degree that is not thankless work. It is a skill set that is losing its value to the public, but it should not be thought of this way. The sources I used to present my evidence included educational journals like the CPA Journal and the Wall Street Journal. Along with this, helpful websites like Indeed, Accounting Today, Business Insider, Entrepreneur, Going Concern, and Controller's Counselor. Council helped me pursue my research. The articles I used and the relevance to this paper are as follows. An update on the future of accounting education by the CPA Journal helped back up research on the decline of enrollment into accounting degrees and CPA credentials. The growing shortage of accountants and CPAs by Controllers Council laid out the basic issues with the growing problem on the shortage of accountants in the field. Why accountants are quitting and even some new graduates don't want their jobs by Wall Street Journal explains the numbers related to the shortage and why students are not following accounting career paths. Number of the day, 75%, by Going Concerned, portrays the mass exodus of retiring accountants from the field. Can computers replace human accountants? We doubt they can, by Entrepreneur.com, details why computers cannot replace humans in accounting firms. CPA versus Accountant, Definitions and Primary Differences by Indeed.com, defines the roles and requirements for accountants and CPAs. Planning Partner Requirements, Retirements, by Accounting Today, helped explain the research into current partners' retirement requirements and handing off responsibility to lower management. Lastly, a shortage of accountants is pushing the industry to reboot its image to win over young talent, you have to sell them, by Business Insider, supports that the accounting and CPA profession is facing a crucial shortage. Based on my research, the recommendations I support for solving this oncoming issue before it is too late is to allow the public to recognize the importance of accounting and the positive impact of earning the degree for the individual, the public, and companies. Making a CPA licensure simpler to attain may also help the CPA shortage among current accounting professionals. Eliminating the 150-hour requirement, extending the testing completion window past 18 months, increasing entry-level salaries, reducing work hours, and allowing CPA exam candidates to qualify for the license by apprenticing under another CPA are all ways that the shortage can be solved. Dropping many high barriers for entry may be the only answer to solving the problem. To conclude this presentation, 
Accounting is an underrated degree that can be difficult to attain in college, but comes with many rewards upon completion. There are ample work opportunities, even before graduation, and a degree is prevalent in order for businesses to operate successfully. Salaries may increase in the near future with the declining work base, and this will open up opportunities even further. Along with this, CPA credentialing may not be so difficult to obtain in the future. Accounting should be treated as one of the most desirable degrees and jobs to attain, since it holds a significant role in society. Thank you very much for listening.